Uh, once again, good morning, good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Yulia Zhernavaya, and I'm the head of strategy and growth at GiveEffect. GiveEffect is software company built software platform built for nonprofits for those who are tired of using multiple systems, siloed tools for donors, volunteers, marketing, brands, you name it, and ready to make a switch, ready to have everything on one platform to achieve financial stability, greater results, but also just work as a team finally without any silos. And I'm joined by Andy, my co-host. Hey everyone, my name is Andy. I am the founder and CEO of Do Good Points. We are a social enterprise that comprises of both a 501c3 foundation and a for-profit technology company where we build technology, business programs, and services that enable what we call profit with purpose. And specifically for the nonprofit people in here, we believe that nonprofits should be profitable. So how do we do that? We build products, services, and programs that enable nonprofits to be profitable. Majority of all of our products and services are either free or we make it as cost-effective as possible for every organization to utilize it. So happy to be here. Thanks, Julia. Fantastic. Well, we are so excited to welcome everyone for our second speed learning session. Um, so speed learning session is short, but packed with practical and tactical 15 minutes of information, 15 minutes of learning, followed by 10 minutes of Q&A. Last week, we had fantastic engagement in the chat. We've got so many questions in the chat, in the Q&A session, but also really great feedback uh, on the survey form. So thank you for everyone who participated. And we're really looking forward to have a fruitful and engaged conversation today as well. So last week, we spoke about why Google Ad Grants matter. And there was so many great nuggets and pieces of information. And there's a few key takeaways that I wanted to highlight for those who were the session or maybe missed it. And I'm sure there's much more, but I think for many people I heard what stood out is that Google Ad Grants is $10,000 a month, right? A grant, uh, and it's a Google spend, ad spend, right? It's not the actual $10,000. and if you don't use it, you lose it. I think the other takeaway was that anyone, if you're a 501c3 nonprofit can apply, the application takes less than 40 minutes or an hour and you get approved in a matter of a few days. And then Andy, you shared so many great information in terms of what types of nonprofit are, should be considering the grant. And I know there was so much more questions. So I'm sure everyone can wait to hear more about some of those strategies and things that you're about to share. So today we're going to talk about secrets of effective uh, Google Ad Grants management. And again, from the questions last week and the registration form, I think everyone is just dying to know, like, what is the what does it take essentially to manage Google Ad Grants? Yeah. And let's jump into it uh, again. We have fifteen minutes, so I'm going to dive deep and. I'm going to kind of rush through this a little bit just so we can cover as much um, material as possible and get to the Q&A um, as soon as possible, because I think, you know, I want to make sure this is value adding. Um, the first thing that I would love to start with is just to manage expectations, right? And the, you you got to know that this, the grant is, is a grant and it needs to be managed, right? And it's not like Yulia said from the first session, this is not $10,000 in cash that you can just go and spend freely. This is $10,000 in ad credits that directly to your account that use it or lose it. And on average, it takes an average ad manager anywhere between 10 to 15, 15 to 20 hours, depending on their skill level and seniority, um, 10 to 20 hours a week to manage the Google ads to effectively operate about $10,000 per month in Google ads spend, right? So that is the reality check. And that is the, you know, to manage expectations here, right? Like it, it takes work, time and energy and resources to manage this grant, right? So if you thought that this was something that was just available, it's going to run itself, it's going to, you know, it, it's not the case, all right? So think of it as like any other part of your business or your organization, 
if you had $10,000 in programming that needed to go out as a product or a service, someone needs to manage that programming or product or service, right? It's the same thing. So if you're going to use 10,000 of your own dollars in advertising, who's going to manage that, right? So like, again, it's the same, like Google ad grant is an ad credit they do not give you an assigned person. They do not hire someone for you. They don't tell you who to hire. Like you have to manage it, right? And it takes the average person 10 to 20 hours per week. And there are some caveats here, right? So again, going back into it, like now that you have the grant, amazing. Like um, you you got through the first hurdle. Like now mm -hmm. this, the real work begins because 10 to 20 hours a week, that's a lot of hours, right? And why is there such a big range is because people make a living doing this. Like there's a profession that like usually at big companies, it's a whole, like it's a whole job role or a department, depending on the size of the organization that manages Google ads by themselves, right? So then they make a living doing this. So based on that person's skill set, seniority, experience, it, that range is like 10 to 20 hours. Mm -hmm. The other aspect of this that you have to really, really take into consideration here is that the grant is restricted, meaning that Google does not give you $10,000 just to spend freely on every, any advertisement word, right? And the way Google works, um, Google Ads works, is that it's a bidding system. So you can't go in there and say, I'm gonna bid $10,000 on one on one ad or one word. It's just- No. It, <laughs> yeah, right? Like it doesn't, it doesn't work like that because um, it's an ecosystem, right? So in order for Google to control ad spend and the way um, ads are served and all of those regulations, and there's a lot of them, um, Google also puts restrictions on, on the grants that they provide. For example, there is a cap mm -hmm. on the CPC, which is a cost per click, um, where in the free market, if it wasn't a, a grant, you can bid whatever you want, right? Like right. willing to spend $10,000 on one keyword or one ad, they can do that because it's it's cash. But with a grant, they they limit what you can do tactically, right? And it's a way for them to control the marketplace. But also, um, it enforces um, nonprofits that have the grant to be more tactical, more intentional. So it's actually harder to spend a ten thousand dollar Google Ad grant than it would be to spend ten thousand dollars normally in a regular Google Ad account. Um, Yulia, is there anything else I should dig into as far as, yeah. No, I think it's great, but I'm just curious what kind of, what, what, what limitation are we talking about, right? Is there a number? In um, terms there's of a lot, yeah. So there isn't like one specific thing mm -hmm. as far as the grant restrictions. There's a whole list, um, you know, it and it's public, like Google doesn't hide it. When you apply for it, it, it gives you the terms and conditions. But obviously, in most organizations, unless you're familiar with running Google Ads, you're not going to recognize it, right? You're not going to recognize those limitations or those requirements. Mm -hmm. um, but you, for example, there are caps on CPCs. You have to maintain. Um, you have to maintain certain keywords and optimization scores. Um, you are restricted from certain keywords or overly generic keywords. Is is the correct term? Um, as well as you have to maintain your Google ad account, right? So if you don't, if, you're, if your account is not active and you're not running ads right. effectively and actively, then you will lose the grant, right? Okay. So, then, so uh, essentially, essentially yeah. you can just like set it and forget it, right? Yeah, <sighs> it's unfortunately that's not the case, right? And most nonprofits, the number one problem that we run into with, with nonprofits that actually have the grant is that they they don't prop well there's two problems one they don't allocate proper resources for people to to utilize the grant right again they don't think of it like oh i have to dedicate mm -hmm. if they're you know myself 10 to 20 hours or a staff member 10 to 20 hours right or the other option is obviously mm -hmm. getting a service provider right so then it's like you need to know what you're stepping into which is like again this thing it's it's work right but that work should like should give you a return, what we call ROG, mm -hmm. return on giving, right? Mm -hmm. Like you invest into something in order to get a return on your giving and your investment, right? So then it's like you're, the upside is huge because you're getting $10,000 in free ad spend, but you're going to have, you, you know, that doesn't, there's no such thing as a free lunch. You have to put in work, you have to invest resources in order to utilize that grant. Mm -hmm. That's great. So what I hear, right, we need to think about 
time, right? We need to, <laughs> that's that's the biggest, the resources we can use, right? Um, but, and you kind of touch upon the strategy, right? Because there are limitations, as you mentioned, right? On the keywords you can use or not use and so on. So um, can you share a little bit more about what strategy nonprofit should yeah. consider when they, okay, maybe I do have 20 hours <laughs> or how many hours? So, but what is the strategy? Where do I start? Yeah, so let's let's go into that. And I'll give you a high level in regards to how I think, generally speaking, um, organizations should, as a starting place, think about mm -hmm. strategy, right? Number one, again, to manage expectations, like you, nonprofits need to stop thinking like this is some type of silver bullet, right? Like uh, $10,000 sounds like an incredible amount of money. It, it, in the grand scheme of things to Google and in the mm -hmm. ad space, it's really not a lot. It's not even a drop in a bucket. You think about organizations. Um, we have our client, our partner client organizations spend $100 million a year on Google ads, right? And you think about larger nonprofit, like billion dollar nonprofit organizations, they spend millions on just certain keywords and dominance, right? So um, $10,000 you need to think through. It's like, it sounds like a lot, but again, you need to be more tactical with it, right? The other aspect of it is that it's not your, it's not going to answer all your prayers, right? Like, it's like, oh my gosh, $10,000, I can do all this advertising. I'm going to get all of this donations. Um, it's a long tail strategy, just like any other advertising programs. Yes, you have the chance to go viral or like, you know, get lucky or whatever you want to call it. Um, but that's not what you should like expect. All right. So that said, what Google ad is, is very different from other ad platforms. So the way you think about it needs to be very different. It's the way you and I use Google, right? It's every, everyone that's on this call. Think about the way you use Google. You use Google to go on there with, with an intent to search something, to look for something, to research something, mm -hmm. whatever it might be. You're going on there. You're not going on there like you do Instagram or TikTok to scroll and be enter entertained. You're right. going there to with, with the pursuit of something, right? Mm -hmm. With an intention for something. That's where the ads come into play. The ads work at, and operate to connect you to people that are coming to Google with an intent for something. So an intent for your product or your services or your cost, right? What, and what, what those actions are, who knows, right? And that's where the ads need to be served in order to connect to those people. Mm -hmm. Couple of things to think about is um, you can never control what people are searching for, right? Mm -hmm. Like that's the one thing people get confused. Like, where on a platform like Instagram, yes, people are just on there because mm -hmm. they're on there for content, right? Google is different where it's like people have to be searching for your product, mm -hmm. right? But the good news is there's billions of people, right? Like it's the number one search platform in the world. Like um, it's not a lack of people on there. It's um, But it's a matter of like, where what is the demand mm -hmm. for your topic, your product or your service? Mm -hmm. So strategy wise, we like to keep it very high level. And you and again, because ten thousand dollars is, is a limited budget, it's not an endless budget. Mm -hmm. So it's always good to start high level and then kind of work your way down. And this is what we'll talk about in the third session, kind of a full funnel strategy. But it's like think of Google ads and like any other advertising as a starting place, right? Mm -hmm. As a place to build a relationship. And the strategy that we like to recommend to think through in the beginning is a full funnel strategy, a very basic full funnel strategy that starts with one top of funnel, which is um, gonna be awareness, right? So it's it's getting people to just know that you exist, right? Like to see your logo, to go to your website, to um, know, understand your headline copy, what your mission is, what your product or your service is, what your cause is, right? Because that's the number one problem. Most mm -hmm. people just don't know that you exist, right? So then that is an awareness campaign. And that's mostly identified mm -hmm. as a CPC, which is a cost per click on Google ads, right? So then they're clicking as they search for something, they see your ad and I was like, okay, I'm looking for an animal shelter mm -hmm. in my neighborhood, in this zip code, whatever it might be. And then they see your ad, they click that. That is a CPC. That's a cost per click. And they now what? They now know you exist. They now know where you are. They now mm -hmm. know go to your website. They learn about your organization, your cause. Mm -hmm. That is top of funnel. That is, think of that as a in, human interaction equivalent of like mm -hmm. them seeing you for the first time. It's like, oh, right. you're, here you are, right? Like that, that's, that is like showing up somewhere and seeing someone and, 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 mm -hmm. and meeting that person for the first time. 
the middle of the funnel is, you know, once they kind of land on your site and like now that no, they know that you exist, um, is what we call um, it's when they raise their hand and say, I want to learn more or I want to engage, right? It's saying that, hey, like this is interesting to me or mm -hmm. I'm interested in this, right? Um, and usually for a nonprofit, it's like a newsletter, some type of interest form, maybe it's a workshop, um, but those are usually Which generally. Classified. Would you call volunteer interest form? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That is absolutely uh, volunteer is mm -hmm. it's not always about donors. Actually, I we prefer like it's that's a much better strategy because asking for people to like invest their time more than their money is a lot easier ask, mm -hmm. right? Usually in the beginning. Yeah. But going back into it, that's usually a CPL or a CPR. Mm -hmm. uh, a CPL is a cost per lead or a cost per registration, right? Mm -hmm. So a cost per lead can be a lead that says, hey, I'm interested in learning more about this program, right? So they maybe they click and fill out a form or hey, a cost per registration is like, I wanna sign up for your volunteer training class or this resource or whatever it might be, right? So that is middle of the funnel. That is yeah. identifying of all those people that have come to your store or your, your office, you're, you're identifying the people that says, hey, like that raise their hand and say, I want to learn more. Mm -hmm. I want to connect. I want to start building a relationship, mm -hmm. right? And again, that's where top of the funnel is awareness. Second, middle of the funnel is like the beginning of, of, of a dialogue and a relationship for a product or a service or a cause or whatever, whatever subject matter mm -hmm. it might be, right? And then the last piece to this, um, again, I know we're getting to time here, so I'll kind of rush through this piece. The last piece is what we call the, uh, you know, like the end of the funnel, right? And mm -hmm. it's generally classified as a CPA, which is a cost per action, right? What is the action you want them to complete, right? So, you know, now that they've gone to your, they know that you exist, they've engaged with your content or your product or your service, mm -hmm. what is the action you want them to complete? Usually for nonprofits um, that we talk to is a donation, right? Um, it's like, yeah, we wanted them to complete the action and that action is a donation. Great. Of course, everyone wants donations. Everyone wants more revenue. Um, and you know, it is possible. And mm -hmm. people do donate online all the time. But you need to manage your expectation. Mm -hmm. It happens very, very rarely. All right. And it needs to happen mostly on a full funnel approach, meaning that they might have to go to your website five, 10, 20, mm -hmm. uh, even a hundred times before they choose to donate to your organization. And think about it from a personal level. When is the last time you go to a website that you just recently discovered or an organization and open up your wallet and say, I'm going to pull out my credit card and, and donate, right? It's, it's very, very rare, right? Um, there's strategy wise, again, you want to think of it holistically. It does happen, right? But also timing is, is very important. Obviously, like one the Ukraine war broke out, like people were donating uh, instantly. So you always want right. to be ready for it. But also you need to understand that it doesn't happen overnight, right? It's 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 a long tail strategy and it drives engagement, which goes back to the first piece of this conversation. You need someone to manage it, right? It's it, you have to be in the ads every day. You have to refresh ads. You have to retarget. You have to see what's working, what's not. You have to look at keywords. You have to look at search intent. All of these different things, and again, it's a mm -hmm. it's a job, right? So then you're either going to do it yourself or you're going to hire an organization to do it. But you need to be realistic. Like this, this is work, right? In order to get value out of it, you have to invest into it. Yeah. I think you touched on uh, this is great, and I think it gives a lot of information for everyone. But I think you're touching on a good point, right? There, there is a lot that goes into it from time commitment, time commitment is just time, right? But if you had to create the whole strategy about it uh, from the start to the actual execution to what we're gonna talk next week, like long-term strategy, that is a big commitment. So how the organization, um, do you see kind of, do, do you see them doing it themselves? Do they have a help? Do, is, can you share, what, what do you see? Yeah, and we could, we could end on this. Um and go into questions, but one, I will encourage everyone on this call, you are absolutely capable of managing it yourself. I, I know it sounds daunting and technology, it, it can be very, very intimidating, um, but think of it this way. If you use Google and you can navigate Google, you can probably figure out. Google is an amazing company, they're, they're a big company. 
they they offer free um free training courses um that are really really well done right like i i have our own team members take them right so um it's though and they're free and we also offer free workshops on how to train but it's like anything else it takes time to learn something right you're not going to learn it in an hour um it takes investment so i think that's the managed expectations that one, you, you're capable of doing it, but it's going to take some time and energy. And depending on your skill level or experience or exposure to it, it might take you a little bit longer or it might be really fast, right? But you're absolutely capable of doing it, right? So then the question is, is like, do I have the time and resources to actually invest into it? That's what you need to be realistic about. Because if you don't, you're either going to get your staff members to do it or someone else on your team. And, you know, they're going to have to invest like time and energy. So either way, you're spending time is money, money is time, right? So you're going to have to invest something into it, right? And I would say this, like most organizations are like, oh, we'll get a volunteer to do it. It's it's very, very difficult to have a volunteer stay consistently 10 to 20 hours a week to effectively use the grant, right? And it's, um, I, we encourage it. If you have someone that dedicated, then amazing and great. Um, but if it's not, like, it's just, the grant just gets underutilized. We see it yeah. over and over again, right? So then the last piece to this, and, and this would be a shameless plug for ourselves, we do have a, a service, but there are other service providers, all right? So this is not a, a like a hard sell at all. Like our products and services are, are set to be turnkey solutions for organizations that want to just kind of not deal with it, right? Um, but also figure things out. But even outside of that, whether you work with us or not, there these are some other things that you should consider, okay, with any type of service provider or consultant. Because the Google Ad Grant has restrictions, your average ad grant manager, whether they're like a professional doing it, it's not their standard um, ad account. They need to work it differently than they do a standard ad account that uses cash budget. Um, because of that, a lot of the times the service providers are not able to achieve a full $10,000 spend. On average, this is going to be shocking, but there's a lot of organizations that can only spend about three to 500 oh, wow. of the grant a month. So then they want to use it, but they just don't have the tactical resources or they're not investing enough time into it. Right. So then it's like, you, if you want to get the full value, you have to invest into it, right? Mm -hmm. The next thing is like, make sure you're not paying a service provider um, more than obviously the grant that they're able to spend because pay them on a performance base, all right? Meaning that like the, the amount of time that it, they put into it um, will, should determine what they're compensated, right? Because a lot of ad managers, they usually set it and they kind of forget it. And you can kind of get away with that with paid accounts because then you, you don't need a lot of maintenance once a lot of the heavy lift is done in the beginning with the google grant account it's different you actually need to um you have to optimize it you have to work it because of the grant restrictions more regularly in order to optimize a full spend so then your the way you pay a, a service provider or a consultant should be like hey if you're able to achieve you know, um, $10,000 in spend, then you'll get compensated X amount of. Our general rule of thumb is that you should never pay over 20% of your actual ad spend, right? Like that's the max that you should put in, in our opinion, all right? Um, ideally, you should be at about 15% or under, right? So if you want to spend $10,000 in ad spend, you probably, whether it's your own staff time or yourself, you want to be at about $1,500 in, in, in management spend. Right. So that's how much you're investing into in order to spend that much. Mm -hmm. So think of it like if you're running a program that's giving ten thousand dollars in services away yourself as a, as a charity organization, you probably want to keep your spend that like you're operating overhead at, at about right. under 15 percent. Right. Um, it's the same ideology. Right. So then like there's significant upside because you're not spending the $10,000 yourself, but you do need to invest into either your own time, your staff member's time or outside service in order to effectively operate up to $10,000 per month. Awesome. Thank you for that. And that's actually answer one of the questions that we have in a Q&A session from Janet, uh, speaking about the agency uh, management, right? And all of that. So Janet, I hope that answered your question, but let us know if, uh, if you want to learn more about it.
Um, we want to get into, wow, time flies. We only have a few minutes left. So let's get into questions. And if anyone has more questions, please, please, you can still uh, put them in a Q&A session. Uh, but we have a question from Miki and she's uh, asking uh, to clarify your point on keeping the account active. We don't have to run paid ads in addition to Google ad grant, right? Yeah. So you just no. need the Google ad, nothing else. Yeah. Is and just to be clear, you are given a Google ad account that is directly tied to your grant. Mm -hmm. So um, it's it, they're, they're, the accounts are linked, right? So then, um, to, yes, you, you do not need to run active paid ads. You can just run ads and then the ad credit will automatically be a, uh, accredited to your account. Fantastic. That's great. Thank you. Uh, how long should should we plan to decide? Um, how long sh should you plan to decide that much time weekly for the grant? So I guess like how long do you do the time investment? If I understand correctly. Um, it's, it's just, yeah, you have to constantly do it. I think in the beginning, it's probably going to be depending on the skill level will be heavier at about 20 hours per mm -hmm. uh, per week per week, but eventually you'll get to a point where you can optimize to about 10 hours per week. And then if you're able to use certain technologies and tools, it'll help cut that time down, but it is, it's a, it, it doesn't go away. The work doesn't go away is my point, right? Like it's, it needs to be managed. Um, and depending on your goals, because a lot of times organizations, they don't, they might not need to spend all $10,000, right? Mm -hmm. Like because of the restrictions of the grant too, it's like, you might only need to spend like 5,000 or 2,000, depending on your type. We have clients that are like super like local geo-targeting organizations mm -hmm. and they put a limit on the spend because it's really not necessary to go beyond like, they don't need to run national campaigns or, or, or other things. Right. They're really hyper-targeted to like a certain geographical region or something or a product and service that's very niche. Then it's like, okay, then that, that works for them and then they can control. That's what I mean by like, if you're going to use a service provider, make sure you're paying for what you're getting, right? Like don't try to, um, you know, you, you always want to make sure that the return on investment is there. Fantastic. That's great. Um, another question, I know we only have like a minute, so I, I don't know if you have some uh, best practices. Um, I get, the question was, what is the biggest success you've seen so far? Like, I guess, which part did they target? Like top of the funnel, middle of the funnel? Like if you have one story maybe to tell everyone yeah. before we finish. The most successful campaigns will always be top of funnel, right? Mm -hmm. And this is where we kind of set up for the next conversation. You need to think of it holistically and long-term. Top of funnel, driving awareness is the easiest thing to do on mm -hmm. Google Ads, right? Because again, people are searching and you're, you're, that intent, the ads will like match to that intent mm -hmm. of their search, right? So from there, top of the funnel is always the most successful. That doesn't mean middle and end of funnel is not possible. Those are always great goals, but you just need to manage expectations. It's like, that doesn't happen like, like, like gangbusters, right? Like it doesn't like, you're not going to see some massive number. We have seen scenarios and we have clients now that do get a lot more donations than other organizations, mm -hmm. organizations that get a lot more, you know, newsletter signups. Right. But really, again, it's like, depending on the cause, the area, like the search demand. Remember I told you in the beginning of this call, we can't control what people are actually searching for. Mm -hmm. A lot of times it, it's relevant to what's trending, right? Mm -hmm. So then if climate action is trending or like, you know, like that, sub, I'm just kind of making this up, but whatever that subject is trending, that's going to get right. a lot of demand. And then that's where you're going to see like a lot of like conversions and other things happening. Um, so timing is everything as well. But again, I think thinking of, Google ads generally as a top of funnel approach is, is a safe place to start and then hopefully work your way back to optimize for middle and end of funnel. Fantastic. And I think it's just exactly what we're, oh, we're going to talk more about it next week on our last session. That's going to be the same time on Thursday, the 26th. And we're going to talk about how can you take your Google ad grant strategy, combine it with your CRM database overall, overall um, strategy for your organization and talk about actionable tips, tricks, right? You can take to um, connect those two um, so you can get better results in the long run. Uh, but with that, we are on time. Um, so we'd love to ask everyone to, one, there is a link to the next session in the chat. Please join us again next week. Two, we also have a 
short survey. It's only two questions. Once you close this Zoom, it will pop up on your screen. So please give us some feedback. Uh, we would like, I would love to hear from you. But also, if you enjoy the session, you like it, please find us on LinkedIn. Uh, but also, feel free to post about this session and information you learn on social media as well.